In this tutorial, we're going to use Photoshop's content aware technology to remove things that you don't want from an image. Let's start off with something small. All of these images are available in the description below. First of all, hit the letter J on the keyboard once you've opened an image up that has something in it that you don't like. And you're going to need to change the size of the brush to ever so slightly bigger than the thing you want to remove. So here I've got the spot healing brush tool that looks like a plaster on the left. And I'm changing the size to about 30-ish pixels for this image and the hardness to about 50% so the edges aren't too obvious. Simply make your brush a bit smaller with the square brackets on the keyboard if you need and just start clicking on the spots one by one and you'll see that it replaces them with the skin from around it which is okay. Once you find a larger area like this you can click and hold with your mouse and remove an entire group of spots like that. So you can't go over the entire face in one go. Photoshop doesn't know what is spots and what is eyes but if you do this carefully it will recognize the patterns of the texture around what you're trying to remove and fix it all for you. I'm just rushing through this so it's not perfect but that picture is now a lot better. There's a bit of dandruff in an eyebrow up there. It's really incredible how this tool works so quickly quickly and can really help you clean up your photos. Next, what about something bigger, like an entire person? Again, for this, you're gonna to need to click and hold with your mouse. This image here, the people are much larger. So I'm gonna use a square bracket to again, make my brush ever so slightly bigger than the thing I want to remove and then click and hold and drag it down. And don't let go of your mouse until you've gone over both people like this and the shadow as well, let go, and they're gone. It replaces the background. You can see it's copied that shrub over there. It's continued the edge of the sand dune. It's done quite a good job. If there's anything that you think looks too repeated, you can also clone stamp that out as well so you don't draw attention to it. So this is great for removing modern technology from images that you want to look either historical or in this case, maybe completely alien. Doing this to your holiday photos can really make it look like you are the only one there, just like in the brochure. For something much bigger, like this skyscraper, then you're gonna maybe need to do something slightly different for it to work well. First of all, you're gonna to wanna to make an accurate selection of the building. To do that, you can go to the letter W on the keyboard and change your selection tool to the object selection tool. This is available in Photoshop 2020 or above or in Photo P online. Change it to the object selection tool, drag a selection over the object that you'd like to remove like this and not too much bigger than it, but certainly not smaller than it. It will create a selection. If you zoom in, you'll see that it selected it very accurately, but there's going to be some slight edges here that will be left over if we don't do the next step. So I want to grow my selection so that it includes these fading pixels as well. To do that, go to Select, Modify, Expand, and expand it by about three pixels. And you can see now that I have now included the fade between the building and the sky. Once you have your selection, you can go to Edit, content aware fill and it brings up this window here that will show you what parts of the image it's going to use to fill it with you can pan around to see here and you can see the end result over here you want to check that the horizon lines are lining up and that um, it's all looking quite natural from a distance and it is in this case the only thing you want to check on the right is where it's outputting to some prefer to output to a new layer so you have complete control. And if you make a mistake, you can always revert back to the original. I often like to do it on the current layer though, which is destructive, but it means that I can fix it slightly easier. I'm gonna hit OK, and you can see the building has been removed. If you hit Control D to deselect, it has worked. Now there's a few edges here, that uh, it has kind of messed up. So I'm gonna go back to my spot healing brush, which is J on the keyboard, and just paint over these areas that it missed. I probably should have made my selection even bigger than three pixels. That's worked perfectly. Now, if you look carefully, you can see that there's like a slight evidence here that the building was there. And going around the edges of it with the spot healing brush doesn't always work and sometimes makes it worse. So you can see here, there is an ugly line going through where the building was, where it couldn't quite blend the colors well. I'm gonna blend the colors myself with a paintbrush. I'm gonna do B on the keyboard and change the size of my brush to about 500 for this particular image and make sure the hardness is zero. I'm then going to hold Alt on the keyboard to sample a color like this. It's right where I want to blend it. And then I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm just going to click over where I want the blend to be. And each time you can hold Alt to sample again as you go further up in the sky so that you can fade the colors. And here you can see it becomes a little bit more pink. You may then want to put your opacity down quite low and again sample and anywhere that you think looks a little bit blobby 
with a very low opacity brush, you can then just start to fade even more over areas that you think you can just blend together slightly better like that. A good reason to remove buildings from an image like this is so that you can actually put the building back on top and then using a layer mask, simply paint that building back out and it will then start to reveal the color from behind it in. So this can be a great way to add damage and stuff like this to buildings so that you can see the environment behind it. And that is how to remove things that you don't want from images. Click here for a full tutorial on how to destroy a city using the methods I've done with this building. I hope that helps.